What's up, you friggin' geniuses? So, in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to simplify algebraic expressions with absolute values. And also, I'm gonna do a bunch of examples showing you how to solve them using the order of operations. And in case you need a little refresher on the order of operations in PEMDAS, I'll link a video to that in the card above because it's gonna be really helpful for what we're talking about in this video, okay? Now, the important thing to realize about absolute value bars is that we treat them similarly to how we treat parentheses. So when it comes to the order of operations, if we have parentheses in our problem, we solve those first, right? Same thing when it comes to absolute value. If we have absolute value bars in our problem, we'll do those first. So let me give you a couple examples. So if we had eight plus one plus one, and I put parentheses around this one plus one part, how would we simplify this expression? Well, we would go to our order of operations, right, and be like, okay, we always start with parentheses, right? So do we have any parentheses in our problem? Yes, we have parentheses right here. Okay, so that means that's where I'm going to start. So let's simplify what's inside of the parentheses first. So we have 1 plus 1. What does that simplify down to? Just 2, right? Then we'll bring down our parentheses, and then we'll also bring down this 8 plus part. Okay, now we're just left with 8 plus, and in parentheses right here, all we're left with is the number 2, right? Can we simplify what is inside of our parentheses anymore? Can we simplify the number 2 anymore? No. 2 is just a number. That's as simple as it can get. So we can basically drop the parentheses, and all we're going to have left is 8 plus 2. So now, what is 8 plus 2? Well, that's just equal to 10. Okay, so that would be your answer. Now, let's try this problem here one more time, but instead of parentheses... What if I put absolute value bars right here? So like I mentioned before, we treat absolute value bars similarly to how we treat parentheses. So when we have parentheses in our problem, that's where we start, okay? But if we have absolute value bars in our problem, then that's where we start. Okay, so what is the absolute value of one plus one? Well, let's simplify what we have in here first. What's one plus one? Well, that's two, right? And then we'll bring down our absolute value bars, and then we'll also bring down this 8 plus part. So now we're left with 8 plus the absolute value of 2. Can we simplify our absolute value over here anymore? Sure. What's the absolute value of 2? Well, that's just 2, right? Okay, so we're done simplifying that. Let's bring down this 8 plus again. Now we're just left with 8 plus 2, and 8 plus 2 again is just 10. Okay, so let's try one more. What if we had... 8 plus 1 minus 3. And I'm going to put absolute value bars around this 1 minus 3 part right here. Okay, so where would I start? Well, I have absolute value bars right here, right? So that's where I would start. Okay, so let's simplify what's inside of these bars. So we have 1 minus 3. What's 1 minus 3? That's equal to negative 2. Okay, so again, let's bring down our absolute value bars. And let's bring down this 8 plus part. Okay, so now we're left with 8 plus the absolute value of negative 2. Can we simplify what's inside of our absolute value bars here? Yes, we can, right? What is the absolute value of negative 2? That's just positive 2. So we simplified our absolute value bars. And again, let's bring down this 8 plus part. So again, all we're left with is 8 plus 2, which is just 10. Now, another point to make is... In pre-algebra and algebra, we also use parentheses to show multiplication, right? So, for example, if I give you a problem like this, 4 and then in parentheses, I put a 2 right here. How would I solve this? Well, whenever you see a number next to a set of parentheses like this, that always means multiply, right? So, I could rewrite this like 4 times 2. This and this are the exact same thing. Just two different ways of writing it. Okay, and then what's 4 times 2? That simplifies to just 8, right? So that would be your answer. Now, we can do something similar with absolute value bars. So if I had a 4 and a 2, and I put absolute value bars around the 2, this would mean 4 times the absolute value of 2. So just like in this first problem right here, right? We had 4, and in parentheses, we had a 2 right here. So that means multiply. So same thing over here. We have a 4 next to some absolute value bars. So this means multiply. So I could rewrite this as 
4 times the absolute value of 2. Okay, so I can simplify my absolute value one more time, right? So what's the absolute value of 2? Well, that's just 2, okay? And then we'll bring down this 4 times part down here. So all we're left with here is 4 times 2, which again is just 8. Okay, so what if I had 4 and then in absolute value bars, I had negative 2? Okay, so again, this would mean 4 times the absolute value of negative 2. So let's simplify this. What's the absolute value, right, of negative 2? Well, that would just be positive 2. So we simplified our absolute value part. So let's bring down this 4 times part. So now here, we're just left with 4 times 2. And that's just 8. If I have two absolute okay, and one more for good like measure, this, I'm going to solve them going left six to right. So I'm times start the absolute the left side value and then work of that negative way. 2. Okay. So we have this number next to these absolute value bars. So again, this means multiply. Okay, but before we can multiply, we need to simplify our absolute value part. So what is the absolute value of negative two? Well, that's just two. Okay, so we simplified that. So now let's bring this negative six times part. So negative six times two. So what is negative six times two? Six times two is 12. And then a negative times a positive number is always a negative number. So negative 12 would be your answer. Okay, now the last type of problem I want to show you is what if you had parentheses and absolute values in your problem? How would you solve that? So for example, if we had a problem like this, 25 minus and in parentheses, I'll put 11 plus 4 and in absolute value bars, I will put... 1 minus 3, and then we will close the parentheses. So as you can see, we have both parentheses and absolute value bars. So which one would we start with? Well, you would start with whichever one is smaller. Okay, so what do I mean by that? Well, the absolute value bars go from here to here, right? But the parentheses, they go from here all the way to over here. So which one is smaller, the parentheses or the absolute value bars? the absolute value bars, right? So that is where you would start. Okay, but what if we switch these? What if we had these absolute value bars out here and we had the parentheses inside over here? Which one would you do first? Well, again, you would start with the smaller one. So in this case, which one is the smaller one? Is it the parentheses right here or is it these absolute value bars out here? Well, clearly it's the parentheses, right? So that is where you would start. Okay, but with this example, I'm gonna stick with these absolute value bars inside here, and then I'll leave the parentheses out here. So again, we're gonna start with the smaller one, which again, in this case, are these absolute value bars. So what is the absolute value of one minus three? Well, let's simplify this part first. What's one minus three? That would be negative two. So we simplified this part, so now let's bring down our absolute value bars again. And let's also bring down the rest of our problem. So we have this 11 plus 4, 11 plus 4. Then we have our parentheses here. And we also have this 25 minus out here. Okay, so we still have our absolute value bars here, so we still need to simplify those. So now, what is the absolute value of negative 2? What does that simplify down to? Just 2. Okay, so we simplified that part. Let's bring down the rest of our problem. So again, we have this 11 plus 4. Now, what's going to go in between this 4 and 2? Well, as you can see, this 4 has been sitting outside next to these absolute value bars this whole time. So again, when you see a number like that next to these absolute value bars, this always means multiply, right? Multiply. So we're still multiplying. Okay, and now let's put our parentheses on here. And again, we still have this 25 minus out here that we need to bring down. Okay, so now we're left with 25 minus, and then in parentheses, we have 11 plus 4 times 2. Okay, so what am I going to solve next? Well, I'm done with my absolute value bars, so now I'm going to move on to my parentheses. So let's simplify what's inside of our parentheses now. So what part am I going to do first? Well, remember, According to the order of operations, what comes first? Addition or multiplication? Well, 
Multiplication always comes before addition, right? So we're going to simplify this part first, the 4 times 2. So what is 4 times 2? Well, 4 times 2 is 8. So we just did our multiplication, so now let's bring down this 11 plus part. So now we're just left with 11 plus 8, and 11 plus 8 simplifies down to 19. So inside of our parentheses, we just have 19. Okay, and again, let's bring down this 25 minus part. So we have 25 minus, and in parentheses, 19. Now, can we simplify what's inside of our parentheses anymore? No, right? It's just the number 19. That's as simplified as it can get. So the parentheses go away. Okay, so now we're just left with 25 minus 19, which is just equal to 6. That'd be your answer. All right, guys, so that's how you deal with absolute values in your algebraic expressions. I hope the video and examples were helpful. If they were, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. It's always appreciated. And if you still got questions, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to try and help you out. Also, there's a pre-algebra playlist attached at the end of the video, so if there's any other topics you need help with, definitely make sure to check those out, and I'll see you there.